Listen, we're going to go ahead and jump right into this video. I want to welcome everyone to this page whose first time is today and seeing my page, seeing my video. I want to preface this video by saying that I do come in peace and in love. I know some things that I say, as usual, will ruffle some feathers, right? But I do pray that the ancestors speak through me and that whoever this video is intended to reach, it will reach them. So I was on Instagram yesterday and I saw this short clip of this woman. She was speaking very emphatically relating to a video that she had saw on YouTube with Dr. Umar, who had just completed a podcast interview, right? Now, I'm not going to say the name of the channel that he was on, but it was a three, I think, three and a half hour video, and she was bigging it up saying, go watch it, go watch it, go watch it, go watch it. Now, for those who don't know, I know some of y'all will be coming across this channel on my page for the first time. You've never seen me. I am Danielle. Some people call me Danny's World. Some people call me Dr. Leach. I am a clinical psychologist. I live here in New York City. And I've been following Dr. Umar Johnson for a good period of, of time. I would say since I was living in Los Angeles, back I moved to LA in 2016. So I really kind of got into his mission, his content, uh, really started to study Pan-Africanism, I would say around that time when I kind of got immersed into the study and into his work. So I am a supporter of Dr. Umar Johnson. Don't get it mistaken. But I think that there are some things that need to be cleared up and need to be called into question. And I think this has become an issue within our own community where we feel like we don't want to call someone now. We don't want to check somebody. We got to agree with everything a person says. And I believe that is unhealthy and very toxic. When you see your brethren or your sister doing something or saying something, call them out. Speak to them about it, right? And I've made video responses relating to Dr. Umar topics, relating to his mission, his school. So this is not my first video. Granted, it has been a while though. It has been a while because I kind of focus on a different set of content. But I had to address this because I see that unfortunately, Dr. Umar Johnson has swallowed the red pill. As with many other men who are trying to pacify their broken, fragile egos. We have to call things as it is. And I'm notorious for doing that. It's like, if we're not careful, because social media can be very dangerous. It's a dangerous thing, a dangerous uh, uh, space to be in if you're not careful. And I'm coming from a very a spiritual perspective. I understand spiritual warfare. I run with the best of them. I have very high spiritual rank. So don't come for me unless I sin for you, baby. If you're watching this video, and that goes to anybody, I'm not speaking to any particular person, but I'm just saying though, I do feel called. Like it, I'm, I'm having a tugging on my spirit to do this video, to hold him accountable, because he represents so many other black men who have been impacted by this toxic ideology that is spreading rampant like a disease, y'all. It's an epidemic that our men are becoming more toxic as they experience emasculation, right? As they experience the degradation by the white power structure through these systems. Then they come down on us. It, it kind of trickles down. It's a trickle down effect starting at the top with the dominant white power structure. So if you pay close attention and you listen, not just seeing the visual 
blackness, the visual exterior of him being a black man wearing this African regalia. Don't be mistaken. Anybody can become a pawn. Anybody can become a placement. Anybody could be used as a puppet to do the work of the enemy. So this is where the true spiritual warfare comes in. And this is where you have to really be deep <coughs> in tune with what's happening on a, on a spiritual level to be able to see with your eyes open, wide open. Now, I know when he first started his mission, I would say his message was much more pure. He wasn't as popular, but with popularity comes commercialism. So understand how those two things work, right? It's like the more popular a person's message is, the more commercialized it's become. And what's popular isn't always what's true. I kind of want the old Umar that, yes, granted, he had, when I say smaller influence, I mean in terms of sizable numbers, right? Um, in terms of his uh, reach online, like he wasn't as big back in the day as he is now, clearly, right? But since he's gone on different platforms that are more um, mainstream, that are more secular, I notice his message has gotten tweaked. It's almost like a different spirit force is working, operating through him. And you can hear it, you can see it. And I don't like it. It rubs me a certain kind of way. Because for me, I've always known who I am. I've always been this force, unapologetic, strong-willed woman. There are some weak-willed people out there, specifically women, as we're talking about dating relationships and dispelling these myths that are circulating and being popularized by these pawns, by these people who have been placed as puppets to infiltrate the Black community with negative information, with very toxic ideology and ideals. Don't be dissuaded, because that's what's happening. So I'm gonna address a few things here in this video that I heard him say, and this is not anything new, it's just kind of regurgitated narratives, right? And it kind of began, I first heard it from the life coach that passed away, I don't even wanna say his name, but he was spewing this red pill talk and it's like, how can a man that really purely says he cares about the black community find himself slipping into the pits of toxicity, of hell, being used as a puppet to do the white master's work? Again, we don't need the white man to cause division, to cause separation to put us down, to, to degrade the black woman. They now have puppets and they've been using puppets for a long time. So I'm gonna be clear. First and foremost, there's a method to the madness, right? And so it starts off by them spewing these false statistics right, to say that there are 20 women to one man. And I'm thinking like, how, I'm thinking like, how are, how can people who live in reality, who are awake, how can you believe such falsehood? Like, I'm like, it has to be weak will women, only weak will women. And listen, I'm speaking unapologetically, very direct, very concrete. But no other type of person, a woman who carries herself with poise, with dignity, who knows who she is, who knows truth, knows damn well that is a lie. But it serves 
their intent, right? It serves their mission and their purpose. It serves to build up, boost up their fragile egos. And these are men, and I hate that Dr. Omar Johnson, unfortunately, I hate that because granted, I've spoken so well and highly of him and I still love him. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> that's my man. That's just my internet husband. But that's, that's, that's my man right there. But I hate that he has succumbed to this bullshit. Like, I hate that he's a part of that crowd, of that narrative. I heard that he swallowed the Red Bull to make himself and to feel better, to assuage his own fragile ego. Because these men speak from a place of hurt, of pain. And there's different levels to it, yo. And I learned this because this was years back when I was living in L.A. This person commented on one of my videos. And he did the hashtag M-G-T-O-W. It was foreign to me. I had never seen it before. I'm like, what is this? So me being a vlogger, I created a video in response. And I was like, what the hell, W-T-H, is M-G-T-O-W? And that video went viral. And, of course, it solicited the response, the attention of a lot of broken men who attack me just for me being curious to see, like, what is this, right? But they were in their manosphere, so to speak, in this very negative, toxic frame of mind, frame of thinking, to assume that I'm a woman that attacks men and just is about men versus women. I don't come from that space. <laughs> I'm not of secular influence. Like, I've been detached. I've always been detached from that. I don't even watch TV, right? I'm kind of like in my own bubble, but I'm very much connected and very much aware of what's happening in our society. And so I thought it interesting that at first and foremost, they thought I was coming from that perspective by me being curious. I'm a researcher at heart. I'm an explorer. I'm an adventurer. So I like to learn. And I truly was curious to see what is it. And then that was like the segue, the response that I got in the comments, people just spewing these men spewing you know their pain their hurt their frustration their trauma dumping it all onto my platform i was like okay i started to get a flavor of what it was and i research it and i'm just like okay this is a whole movement this is a whole political movement and they're like no it's not a movement right we're not you know this activist group or anything we're not trying to initiate any type of uh changes in the laws that's some of them because i understand that there's a spectrum of men who represent the whole mctow movement and it's sister the red pill or his cousin however you want to frame it the red pill community right they're like the cousins they're related and there's a spectrum right but what I was getting was the extreme where these men are saying, okay, they want their own society. They want a woman-less society, right? A society free of womb men, right? And I'm like, how is that even possible? And I began to engage in this discourse, right, from their comments. I would create a video response. Like, how is that even possible to, like, it seems unrealistic, right? So they were talking about artificial wombs and all of this such. And I'm like, okay, well, listen, I get it, all right? Whatever floats their boat and whatever makes them feel better as a human being, right, as a person, that's how they deal with their trauma. Because essentially, we got to get to the core of things, right? That's a trauma response. I know trauma <laughs> when I say trauma. And that's a trauma response. You have this adverse reaction to something that is natural, this is, it'd be different if it's something that's supposed to be, is good for you, right? But this, you having this attitude towards your biological counterpart, someone that you're designed to procreate and sustain life with. <laughs> so where down the road in your trajectory and your life good experiences that you now have developed this anti-woman perspective. 
an experience, right? It goes to show that something happened to you, something happened to these men. So I understand they're, they're, they're coming from, right? When you hear what a person is saying, for me, I listen on many different levels, right? To hear, okay, yes, the content of what they're saying, but also assessing what is the motivation for what they're saying? The how and the why, what motivates them to say this? Where is this coming from? Is it coming from a place of revenge? Is it coming from a place of love? Is it coming from a place of curiosity? Is it coming from a place of hurt and pain? And you realize a lot of these men have been hurt, yeah? They feel hurt. A lot of these men have become the victim of their hurt, of their life experiences with women. It makes perfect sense. Looking through that theoretical lens to see they're speaking from a place of hurt, from pain, right? And being put on child support. And instead of them owning up their part to the bad choices that they have made, then what do they do? They split. They split their reality to make women, oh, women are bad, but oh, men are good. Like I said, don't come for me unless I send for you. I'm a whole psychoanalyst out here in these streets. I do this for a living. And so I find that interesting. And so to hear when men speak, they're creating this dichotomy between men and women, painting women to be bad, themselves to be good. I'm like, aha. Uh -huh. And they're using certain tactics, right? They're using certain tools, certain methods to arrive at their conclusion that they draw to justify, to build their case, right? To build upon their defense, which we're going to get to in this video. Like I said, the first is using false, incorrect, non-valid, made-up, statistics to say that there are 20 women to every man and i'm thinking like yo i'm a woman right so i can speak from a certain place right i'm a woman who has been on the dating scene different dating scenes different pools having lived in los angeles having lived in atlanta i'm from jacksonville florida having lived in tallahassee florida that's where i got my bachelor's degree in psychology now living in new york city I have experienced different, an array of different dating pools, so to speak, right? And through that, I'm like, all these men, I don't understand. How is that? I don't understand the ratio that they're giving. It doesn't add up when there are so many men who have hit on me. Like, I'm attracting all these different types of men, a variety of men. You name it not putting any label on what type of man it is, but I'm like, there are a lot of men. So from my purview, I mean, I'm talking about how endless, countless number of men to one woman trying to get on me. And if I gave every last one of them a time of day, then if I really had to, 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 to put a ratio on it, I would say shit. I mean, I would say in any given period, I'll have to do it and break it down to a specified period of time to say, hell, within a week's time, I get 100 men hitting on me to one woman. Imagine if I actually invested and attempted to, <laughs> to engage, to entertain all 100 men. I even posted videos. I had to. I'm like, y'all just wouldn't believe this. I had to screen record and post videos, not really going into too much depth, but check my Facebook page out where I've shown, I've provided evidence. Because sometimes people don't believe what you say out your mouth, but they'll believe what they see with their own eyes. And so I'm like, how do you justify this? What do you say about this? Scrolling through, yo, hundreds of messages I've received from different men. We're talking about hundreds from different men, hundreds of men in a week's time. I cannot make this up. On dating sites. And even in real life. Men are hitting on me. 
right? It's not even to toot my own horn. It's just to dispel the myth that, oh, there are 20 women to one man. And I'm like, okay, if y'all want to create that fake-ass statistic, the same is true. Maybe you, as a man, do get that, right? Depending on probably what you bring to the table. So I think we need to be clear because a lot of the, the narratives are distorted. Truth is not true, is not accurate to say that. And one would say, okay, based on uh, society's perception of what is considered to be beautiful, right? Beauty is really subjective. One may consider me beautiful. I get that comment so much to the point where I, I'm not even lying. I can't even make this up. And I find it to me, dating sites are very entertaining because you learn a lot about people and that's just, I like to study behavior. So, you know, it excites me. But today I just had this encounter with this guy. He's just like telling me I'm beautiful. I get, I hear that so much. Hey, beautiful. Oh my gosh, your eyes. People just, you know, accentuating and acknowledging the external. And I appreciate it, but... I didn't give him the response he expected. He wanted me to say thank you. He was like, so I didn't. I said, hey, how are you? I didn't give him a thank you from his initial compliment, right? Which was his initial message that he sent me. And then he goes, I just complimented you. And I'm like, I see, LOL. He wanted me to say thank you and he was just thrown off because I didn't say thank you. I'm like, yo, I get that often. And this is where I think people go wrong because they lead with ex false expectations. Like, why are you expecting anything from me? I don't owe you anything. I don't owe you a thank you. If I choose, and there are times I do say thank you, but I chose to acknowledge his compliment by saying, hey, how are you doing? There's different ways to say thank you. It's different ways to apologize, as we know in the black culture. Okay, so don't get a mistake, but I find it interesting, though. Um, so I think it really boils down to who a person is, right? But even the least attractive woman by societal standards still get niggas hitting on her. Like, come on. I mean, we really want to be practical with it. Yo, you got crackheads getting married. You got crackhead women with niggas like still at all levels of the totem pole. Women are desired for by men who obviously know a woman's worth. So we're going to get into that part too. Because there's this other thing aside from this fake statistic with the ratio of 20 women to one man, there is this belief, false belief, distorted, I would say, rather believe that men are the prize and women are not. Like I said, this these are all tools. These are all methods to the madness to build this defense, to build an argument, essentially to devalue women, to devalue them importance of women, to not see the value in women. And like I said, it's speaking from a certain place. This is a trauma response that they got to deal with, but this is how they deal with it. Okay. So I got shitted on by different women in my experience as a man, right? I got the short end of the stick, as you will hear a lot of MGTOW men say, or red pill men say, men get the short end of the stick, men get put on child support, what really benefit is it for a man to get married, all these things that they say, right? It's just speaking from pain, from bad experiences, from hurt, and big part of it is them not owning their responsibility in creating such situation, in creating their plight not taking full ownership and responsibility. What was me? I am the victim, right? So then I have this shitty perspective. I have this shitty experience in life. It's easier to say, no, that person is a problem than it is to say, okay, well, maybe let me take a look at me. Let me improve upon myself. It's easier to discard, to make someone else trash, to devalue someone else in order to big yourself up. Is that how you cope with it? Hence the reason why I say it's toxic. It's a toxic myth that needs to be dispelled. But I feel 
more bad for the women who digest these narratives, right? Like the woman whose video that I saw, that kind of prompted me to go and finish watching that interview. I had already started watching it like a week ago. And I finished watching it after seeing her. She's like, yeah, you gotta go see it, you gotta go see it. And it reminded me, I was already watching it anyway. But it's just like women like her and other women who really are weak-willed women, they have low self-esteem, clearly. So hearing those types of narratives, hearing those types of of, uh, of statements, of devaluing statements from men, it validates the negative perceptive, the negative self-concept that they already have anyway. And science has shown that people seek out other people who reinforce, who communicate to them this negative internalized beliefs they already have developed about themselves. It's called validation. People gonna meet you where you at and you seek people to meet you where you at. So if you as a woman hold this negative, low self-esteem, low value, just insecure, just ugly view of self in relation to your account support as a black man. Like, like that's what you're going to attract. You're going to seek out people that validate that. Damn that. Because that's not where it's at. And so going to the second part and relating in, in reference to this whole narrative about men are the prize and women not, it, it kind of piggybacks off the first thing that I mentioned, the first myth with the erroneous ratio that they say men have to women or women to men. It's erroneous, it's false, it's not true. Because <laughs> there are people who live life who can speak to the truth, all right? To say <laughs> that's not the reality. At many different ages, you'll have men that say, oh, well, when a woman meets or reaches a certain age, she's going to hit the wall, right? And so her value, her desirability goes down. That's bullshit as well. <laughs> but the, their argument, that's not even the complete argument. Their, their point is that a woman's value goes down as she ages. But meanwhile, a man's value go up because, oh, as he ages, he gets more money. He increases in social. That's bullshit. It's like, where are they speaking from? That can be no further away from the truth. Everyone has their own perspective, their own taste. And if you choose to believe that bullshit as narrative, then that's on you. I think those men represent a very small sector of our, our community, right? And men who say, well, I prefer a woman in her 20s and I'm 50 and 40 years old. Like they already, they've been pedophiles anyway, right? And if, you know, you like what you like, essentially, right? Um, but if you look at a woman hmm, as a man and you see that her value goes down, you see that her beauty goes down by with age, that's on you. You never saw the value in a woman anyway. <laughs> Because it surely is not linked to external characteristics. That's that could be part of it. But a woman's true value, a woman's true beauty emanates from within. Which leads to the next thing that shows proof that it's toxic and these men are speaking from a place of insecurity and from a place of not having any reverence, not having any respect and value towards the black woman. I hate to call him out. Like I said, it, you know how our parents used to say, this hurt me more than it hurt you. I swear it does. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but somebody has to pull his coattail. And Dr. Umar is dead wrong for him for y'all are really should believe that his way if you want to say oh well no he does value a black woman because you know he talks about butter pecan he talks about coconut he talks about all these different taste flavors by making a comparison 
symbolically speaking, to food, objectifying women. So if you're proven validation that, oh, Dr. Umar Johnson loves a black woman based on his rhetoric and uh, objectifying the woman by talking about her physical characteristics and being five, five, thick in the thighs and cookies, y'all don't see that's objectification. That's no different than what rappers do to women. But I get it, it's black culture, I understand, I get it. So y'all embrace it because it's a black person saying it, but if it was a white person saying these things, perhaps you probably would still embrace it too, even more for that matter. It goes back to how you see yourself. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? A lot of people don't. And a lot of people are just swayed by popular opinion. So if they see majority of people are rooting a person on, they want to join the bandwagon and root that person on too. I am not of that school of thought. I'm not of that persuasive belief. That's just not me. I pride myself in standing tall and firm on who I am. And just, you know, I ride with that. I pride myself in that. I stand firm. I don't waver. I can't. Because it's too costly to waver from the truth. But that's objectification of women. And you think, they think that shit is cute. It's not, it's nothing cute about that. But meanwhile, out of the same mouth... You objectify women, Dr. Umar Johnson, externalizing their beauty out of the same mouth. I'm going to mention two things that he talked about. Cheesecake factory and cheating. And I'm just like, how? It doesn't add up. It's a contradiction. And let me tell you why. So he said these two things. First thing I want to get into is this whole Cheesecake Factory thing. Now, by now, everybody should know the reference. And he says, oh, I don't see anything wrong with a Cheesecake Factory, right? So that he's clearly stating his position. You know, women shouldn't be so picky, so to speak, and have a preference for their type of food choice. Now, y'all remember back in the day, I grew up in the early 80s, right? I'm an 80s baby, born 83. And back in the day, I remember where Red Lobster used to be the shit. And this was like before we became adults, right? But you would see people go to Red Lobster, and that was, like, that was the shit back in the day. Restaurants, first of all, had changed. So Pizza Hut back in the 90s, Red Lobster back then is not the same as it is today. The ingredients have changed. It's a lot of more foods are processed. They are not organic. They're not healthy. So when you know better, you tend to do better. When you increase in self-awareness, you increase in the knowledge that you obtain, your actions should reflect that in all aspects of your life. All right? This is the reason why nobody, you can't get over on me because I'm too well learned. I'm self-educated. I'm well versed i'm spiritually guided and directed like it just can't happen right but i see a lot of people y'all y'all fall in a trap a lot of women fall victim because you got to understand when people who have a mic who have influence such as dr umar johnson they are being used by the power structure clearly because is being reinforced. So he's become commercialized, essentially. Not much different than the other pawns in the game. When they speak, when they speak this rhetoric, they're speaking to your soul. They're speaking to the spirit in you, right? And where whoever it lands on is going to attach. It's going to land. She don't land on me. <laughs> nah, nah, you can't speak them spells on me, baby. But I understand, I know spell work, because I do it myself. 
like I said, it's spiritual ranks of this baby. That don't fly with me, though. But I understand that it does land those spells, that rhetoric that he spews. It lands and it resonates and it binds. It binds to those receptors. It binds to the DNA in a person's mind and throughout a person's body, right? Because the mind is essentially the body throughout a person's body. And it resonates. And you know why you attract that? You know why it binds? You know why there's a connection? It fits like a glove because you already inherently have those negative attitudes, that negative internalized perception of yourself. You don't value yourself. You don't believe that you deserve better. You don't even know what is better for that matter. You don't know what quality food is, right? I understand, yes, there's a saying, oh, stay humble. Never forget where you come from. You know, and I feel like that is an overstatement and people just throw it out there um, very carelessly, you know, not really putting much thought into what it actually means. Where, where do you come from? That's the bigger question. To say, oh, don't forget where you come from. Where do you come from? And to say, don't forget where you come from as if you should embrace, where, where do you come from? Let's start there. And then your answer will determine if you should embrace or forget, right? If you should identify to hold on to something or let it go. Some people say we come from slavery. We come from poverty. We come from lowliness. We come from no identity, having someone else define who we are, colonize our minds. Some people say we come from kings and queens and emperors and empresses and gods and goddesses. Where do you come from? Because if you know where you come from, as the saying goes, you don't have to ask me, who the fuck do I think I am? <laughs> Stay back because <laughs> you have no idea. Right? And they're speaking these things that are popular, that cause division, that cause this back and forth between men and women, clearly that is very excitatory, inciting um, hostility amongst us, with amongst you know the, the, the black man, the black woman. Saying things like that, a person with such influence, clearly we know he's very powerful. His words carry much weight, especially in a lot of people's mind, right? And some people, they hold it as gold, as God's words, right? Speaking, God speaking through him. So whatever he, Dr. Omar Johnson says, at any point in his professional career, in his spiritual journey, whatever he says goes, But I feel like if you are connected to source, you are source, it's just natural. It's not something that you really consciously, because I know we speak of being conscious of being woke, right, as something that we um, are aware of and we're actively always conscious and being able to observe metacognitively what's happening with us internally, metaphysically, right? What's happening in our society. But at some point it becomes second nature. And for me, I feel like it's always been second nature. I do it, yes, on a conscious level, but sometimes it's not even conscious. Sometimes it's just automatic. Like, you know, bullshit. <laughs> when you hear it, you know, like, hold on. My spirit tells me, like, I'm so deeply connected to source that my spirit, like, hell nah, man. <laughs> Don't fall for that shit. That's what's secular, right? Is 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 kind of bordering, you know, the secularity side. Is what's popular. Is what's commercial. Like, hold on, no, 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 no. That ain't got no place in my spirit. What he's saying. It may have place in other people's spirit, and it's feeding their insecurities and their lowliness. But nah, 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 nah. 
And I immediately felt like, hold on. That was like some things he says, okay, when he's really deep into when he's connected to source and disconnected from trying to say what's popular and and go with, you know, what's gonna get a lot of likes and trying to get him the money for the school, listen, I get it. Don't like I don't I'm a business person myself. I get it. But it's just like, you know, when he's not in that space, but when he's really on some revolutionary stuff and really speaking from a place of love then those things resonate with me. I'm like, yeah, it pierces. But all that other shit, I'm like, hell nah, because ain't no way. Now, granted, we all have our preferences. He said, well, I like Cheesecake Factory. You can like Cheesecake Factory, but if you really, I think we like a lot of shit because, okay, it's a chain, popular restaurant, right? And it's affordable or whatever have you. But if, hey, if you were really to go in the back, you really know some people who work there. And let's say you go in the back and meet the chefs and really see the operation behind the scenes. Most people probably wouldn't even eat. Most from most of these restaurants that we glorify and we popularize, you probably wouldn't even eat there. Because you'll realize, okay, the food is really not quality. It's not organic. So if a woman says, because she... And is careful of what she eats and she has a preference and in, in food quality and food choices i don't want to go there then that's her preference because it's a reflection of how she sees herself how she values herself on the same token he made a comment to say if one of his daughters because he has two daughters that he did not raise they essentially were bastardized children Growing up in a single parent household, two different baby mamas. And he goes to say in this podcast interview that if one of them came back and told him, Hey, dad, what do you think about this? My husband is cheating on me. And when he said, I would ask, I'm like, Hold up. <laughs> when he started off by saying, I would ask her. I'm like, oh, I already knew it was going to be some bullshit. Like I said, when you connect to the source, you already know the end before the beginning. You already know. <laughs> you already fucking know what's about to come forth. And he goes, I would ask her to explore how serious it is. How serious is the connection that the her husband, her cheating husband, the, his daughter, he's talking about his daughters now. <laughs> like, say y'all really to wake up. Wake up, baby, wake up, hello. <laughs> what is it gonna take to wake y'all motherfuckers up? But he's talking about his daughters, his biological daughters that came from his loin, that came from his blood. And this is all symbolically, spiritually speaking, because this is an elder. Dr. Umar Johnson is becoming an elder. He's a leader. He's, he's a person that people look up to. That people take his words at face value and digest them and apply them to their lives. He's a person that of influence that is supposed to be opening a revolutionary school for black children and replicating that across America and then across the globe. Tapping into the minds reshaping the minds of African children. He's telling you, this is the thing, when people show you who they are, believe them. Don't try to say, oh, well, well he used to be this, right? He used to speak truth. His words used to be pure. His message used to be right on. And... In part, it still is, but we got to be careful when we're talking about truth. Truth is truth, 100% unadulterated. But when people start mixing this and that with it, you're like, hold on. That's how they get you. It's easy to swallow falsehood when it's disguised as truth. And a person is wearing all the regalia that speaks to your subconscious mind. 
that make you want to listen to what they have to say. But listen to what a person says. Listen, I said, like I said at the beginning of this video, I listen on many different levels. Listen closely. And if you were listening, you would see like, hold on, like, come on, do y'all not have discernment? Because some of y'all don't have discernment and you'll listen to some of y'all. I know watching this video will sit up here and take this video and take my words and say, oh, she's hating. Like I said, I speak from a place of love, baby. No hate in my heart. Nothing to hate on. Nothing to hate about. <laughs> but correction needs to happen. And he's wrong, baby, with the words. You're wrong. To say that he would ask his daughter, tell his daughter to explore with her cheating husband his motivation. And beyond that, to see if it really is that serious. To see what position the cheating husband sees his daughter. And he says if his daughter is still in first place, is more important than the person he cheated with, forgive and let go. I'm like, what, kind of, what the hell kind of advice is that? And he goes to justify it to say, women should know that men are going to cheat. To my especially church men. Like, what kind of community, what kind of society, you know, what is this that we have created this acceptability of toxic behavior to say, oh, we're going to do it anyway. So we might as well just prepare for it and to decide, oh, the seriousness of it. And if he still loves you, first of all, ain't nobody that loves somebody going to make somebody, oh, he shouldn't, she shouldn't leave for a little oops, a little oops, oops, my ass. They know damn oops, cheating is a conscious decision. Like this is you should be taking advice from people who are immature, like I said, did not take responsibility. These are men, yo, they're broken, toxic. It all, all speaks to that. To have that kind of perspective on cheating, we're talking about a marriage, a sacred marriage, where there's supposed to be trust, transparency, and truthfulness. And you're going to give advice to your, your daughter to take back and accept her cheating husband just because he tells her, oh, no, baby, but she doesn't really matter. I love you. Like, are you? And how old is Dr. Umar? I kind of lost count because I don't really follow him like I did before. I'm not really into it like that. He kind of lost me because I'm about pure truth, man. Fuck what's popular. Y'all see the views of my videos. I'm not... I'm not bent for that. I'm not hell bent on video on views on videos. That's just not me. I'm bent on truth, man. What the hell? And so to see a person saying that coming from that perspective goes to show you, okay, it makes sense why you at your old age is unmarried, never been married, you didn't raise your daughters, right? Makes sense. Why you're not? He's in my, oh, well, I could have been married. And he's naming different women. Oh, I could have been. Like, but you're not. And you never, I said this before, yo, he would ne never fucking be married. You're never going to be married. Ain't no woman of quality. Ain't no self-respecting woman is going to marry that. A lot of healing needs to take place. A lot of self-accountability needs to take place, yo. He's still speaking from a very immature, childlike mindset. Now, we got a lot of work that needs to be done. And he talked about this school. And granted, listen, like I said, I support the mission. This came across a person, another guy on a dating site who asked me, what do you think about Dr. Umar? Because he's trending, clearly. So people want to know my take on him. And I said, listen, that's a whole phone conversation right there. Right? 
I always support the mission. I love the ideology. Like the and, and I even wrote about this on my website. I have an article on behappy.org, spelled B-I-H-A-P-I.org, and on dreampathways.org, where I bigged up his whole vision. Uh, Umar Johnson's vision to, to open the FDNG Academy. I made videos. I support that, right? Especially if the motivation and intention is pure about uplifting and revolutionizing the minds, decolonizing the African child's mind. I'm all about that, right? But coming with that kind of energy, you're perpetuating generational curses we got to come to a higher standard and dispel and debunk those myths because it's garbage is misinformation and you're recreating a false you're creating a false reality we have the ability we have the power to create whatever reality you want to create let's start there right so when people go and create these uh, and uh, perpetuate these false narratives Going back to the whole ratio of, oh, 20 women to one man and women are not the prize. And because such, women should lower their standards and, and settle for cheating men, putting themselves at risk for catching STDs because this man is not responsible to keep his dick in his fucking pants, right? And wants to be sexually promiscuous like a little child. Yeah, he already, it's funny because he, he, he speaks mixed truths, right? False half truths. So he'll say in the podcast interview, oh, um, the main reason why, you know, people are promiscuous is like sex is a drug. Okay. If it's a drug and men are just having indiscriminate sex, cheating on their wives, how can you accept that kind of behavior? That's unacceptable. If you, the, the same energy you come with to not accept interracial marriage like he's held true to that stance no no snow bunnies right no interracial you held true to that i need you to hold true to what's right you got it we have to set that standard you don't bend you don't make excuses a lot of people say oh well okay going alongside your false statistic that there are 20 women to one man then that should give Women, if that is true, which like I said before, is not, but going along with that, women will say, all right, well, wouldn't that mean we should explore other races, right? Be allowed, you're holding true to that. So hold, keep that same energy with men being sexually promiscuous, fucking every motherfucking thing they see. Have a standard for that to say no. Hell to the no. Oh, and on this polygamous thing, Listen, I'm not against polygamy, but I can tell from the space that he's talking about polygamy, it's unhealthy. It's all this shit is unhealthy. And I've already explained why. Right? Y'all feel free to share your own perspective below. But it's unhealthy. Listen, because he's you gotta listen to what he's saying, y'all. Y'all not listening with the right ears and seeing with the right eyes. Okay. He says. Three incomes are better than two. Do y'all hear that? But he's glorifying polygamy. <coughs> Hold on. He's speaking on polygamy, idolizing it from the perspective of African culture, right? This is a Pan-Africanist, so we got to put things into context now. You know anything about African culture? Because sometimes people don't know, so you just, you really digest it and take in everything a person says, but you don't know, you don't haven't done the research. But he's, you listen, because he always talk about it. And this, that's the thing, when it comes to distortion of truth, or some people may call it satanic beliefs, right? Falsehood, or whatever name you want to give it to, right? When you talk about things coming from, the dark side or the evil side, like they will, they will tell you truth, right? So that's what makes it, you take it in, make you digest it. But then it's always a little caveat. Like they mix that shit. You're like, hold on. You gotta be quick and be attentive and conscious and aware. Like, hold on, hold on. You mixing that shit up, right? So 
in his videos, he'll say, oh, within African culture, men take care of the women. Provide. Are providers. You're not really expected to work. You can contribute within that same mouth, with that same mouth and tongue of his. He'll say, oh, to justify the rationale for polygamy, because he just wants two wives, right? He's saying, okay, it's for nation building. And granted, it can be. It can be for that, but his rationale is off. It's contradictory to say that three incomes are better than one. So now you're talking about 33, 33, 33 split. Y'all got to really think this thing all the way through. People don't accept shit at face value. Think it all the way through, right? You got women that are opposed to 50, 50 split. Like, hold on now. You got to break this shit. Y'all don't, don't break it down. And the reason why you don't break it down probably because you don't know your self-worth. You don't value yourself. I'm speaking as a woman knows her self-worth. There are, like I say, weak-willed women. You accept anything. And I see, I look at women, see all the shit y'all tolerate for men and shit y'all go through. And I, I can't eat. I don't, I don't have the tolerance for that. My tolerance is low. Okay, but y'all shit all the way up here for bullshit. And it goes, how it, it, it takes away, it chips away, it eats away at your self-esteem, your identity as a queen that you are. And so there are women who accept the 50-50. How is it 50-50 if you're contributing 50 towards 50% 50 of the bills? He's contributing 50 that's not half and half. Number one, especially if you're talking about building a family, you are a woman. You have a womb. At the same time, these men expect you to work and contribute the same amount they contribute to the finance of the household and carry a child and cook and clean, but you think you're getting 50. It's not 50 50. Do y'all not know business? Because if y'all doing that kind of math in business, you're not going no wonder your ass broke. No wonder you end up broken. No wonder. You're carrying the weight. No wonder he doesn't respect you. In the same mouth, out of the same mouth, he also says, because they ask him, oh, what kind of woman you like? Oh, the kind of woman I like is confident, has self-esteem, high self-esteem. Is, can trust me, is not going to be jealous or feel insecure when I'm out on tour. You hear that? Which means it ain't none of y'all little motherfuckers that accept this maltreatment and being uh, put down and spoken to and about in a derogatory way and selling for less and believing that, oh, there are 20 women to one man and believing that it's okay for your man to cheat you see the contradiction? All the shit that he say, these, I'm not just saying him, I'm using him as an example, right? Dr. Umar, he's an example, but notice all the shit that he say, oh, this is how women should be, really devaluing the woman, settling for a cheating man, right? Being objectified, oh, cookies, five, five, no, you're not going to use that kind of language around me. You can be joking all day and it's become a joke so much to the point where, okay, people use humor even when they being offensive and being sexually inappropriate. Nah. <laughs> you got to know me just to know me. I don't tolerate that bullshit. Nah. You're not going to disrespect. That's disrespectful. Oh, selling for cheesecake. Oh. You got to settle for what you got because there are 20 women to one man. So you don't have that many options. So therefore, you should lower your standards. Speaking all of that out of the same mouth says, oh, but then he wants <laughs> the opposite kind of woman. The woman that he wants and these kind of men, these red pill men want is not that kind of woman that they described before. To say, okay, this is the woman that should tolerate all this bullshit. They're not the same women, baby. 
I guarantee you that. That's the funny thing about it. And that's the reason why he remains single because those men speak from a place of confusion. So you got to know spiritual warfare, baby. You can't play with people that deal with spiritual warfare. I ain't talking about just because you wear the, the regal, you wear the African stuff. A lot of people wear African stuff, but they don't have that spiritual rank. They've lost that power. You got to know the difference. And they may have spiritual rank, but it's on the other side of the token. And they doing, I hate to put it this way. And like I say, you know, I, you know, I was born Christian, yes. But I've ascended beyond Christianity. You got to understand, yo, it's, a, it's different sides to the coin. So he may have spiritual rank and he's doing the business, but it ain't the business you think. I hate that. Like I said, I hate to say it. It hurt me more than it hurts you. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. And y'all hating it and accepting it. So speak from a place of confusion. That's the reason why he's still single. And those are the women that, that watch him, that digest that information, that, oh my gosh, she's speaking the truth. And you got to be careful, because I almost became that woman. Like I say, you can still find, I'm not deleting no videos I made, but it's there. I made videos, speaking up Dr. Umar Johnson, saying, oh, I could be, I made a joke saying, oh, I could be Dr. Umar Johnson's wife. This was several years ago when I was back in LA, completing my doctoral studies. Right? I was like one of his biggest fans. And listen, I support the mission. It's always about the mission with me. As a Pan-African, I support that, but it has to be pure. It has to be truth. And when you see that it's starting to deviate away from that, hold on. Like I said, the woman that he's talking about, that he's describing, that how women should be, ain't the woman he want. <laughs> Notice that. You ever notice that? It's the same thing with the rap industry. The same kind of women you see in the motherfucking videos, shaking their ass and, you know, with the rappers and all of that, that's not the kind of women they put that ring on, baby. They're not the kind of, that's not the woman they want. But they promoting that. Do you understand where I'm coming from now? They promote that. And then that's what people become. That's what people settle for. Women say, okay, well, they believe that. They internalize the, that negative bullshit, that negative ideology of themselves, low self-esteem. And it continues to perpetuate the cycle and reinforcing that bad behavior in the male counterpart species. Cheating will never be acceptable in my book. So for him to say that he will tell his daughters that, oh my God. now my phone ringing. I'm trying to throw up my video. But for him to say that bullshit, somebody he would tell his daughters, his biological children that, that's debauchery, baby. But he didn't raise not now one of those daughters because he's not qualified and if you're talking about you doing the work of the ancestors, you're talking about you're doing the work of those who hold spiritual rank, that's blasphemy. And you're not going to be granted access to the school. And if you so happen to able to open that school, you're going to be doing or working on the other side. If you get what I'm saying, you're not working, you're not coming from a good place. <laughs> Or as they call it, God's work. You're not doing that. You're doing another kind of God's work, but not what y'all think it is. So I'm just saying, be careful. It rubbed me a certain kind of way. Like I said, I always know who I am. And, so, and even if you have to, and there are women that said in the comments, because they were reading the comments as he was doing the live podcast interview that was like three and a half hours he was reading the comments and the women are like, well, you know, I would just be single. <laughs> if I got to do all, set up for all that and, and lower my value and my self-worth, <laughs> are you kidding? And there are women who've done that and they can speak just like I'm speaking from experience to say, that's not the way to go, baby. 
for what? To say, okay, you have a man? You don't want that kind of man. That's not the kind of man that you want. That believes that that kind of behavior is acceptable. Knock, knock, knock. I'm trying to reach the woman inside of you who loves herself. Where are you? If you're in there, hello. That's not what you want, and that's not who you are, sweetheart. You got to know your self-worth, baby. Don't be fooled is all I'm saying. And a lot of y'all have been swindled, been hoodwinked, been dissuaded. You have been brainwashed, and you keep listening. And all I ask is that if you listen, you watch, because, of course, I listen, I watch, but you have to be connected to source, baby. To know that's some bullshit. And there are times when he was speaking truth. And I'm sitting here looking at my TV. And I'm like. Speak that. Right? But then you, you slip over. You got to notice how he deviate. And then the guys that was doing the interview. Hosting the interview laughing. Reinforcing that same kind of negative ideology. But you're supposed to be the leader to pull us out. Of the muck and mire. You're supposed to pull us out of this bullshit. How are you going to pull us out if you're further perpetuating it? No different than the rappers. Well, let me get off this. All I'm here to say is... Account. Now my phone want to go off. But we got to hold people accountable. That's all I'm saying. Don't come for me unless I sent you. Because I deal in duality. And you will have people that will say, like himself, and I believe I've heard him say this before, that they have to put on a certain kind of coat, figuratively speaking, to be able to reach certain people because that's the only language they understand, right? You have to get down and meet people where they are. Yeah, but don't be so fool and be trying to be slick like a little snake. Because that, that has some truth to it, yes. But it's a fine gray line when it comes to that. And be careful when a person is speaking words that they claim to be true. And it could be their truth, but it's not true. But people are believing as such. And it's creating this shift. It's, it's reinforcing. It's reinforcing these generational curses, further perpetuating it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I just think it's funny because I watched them. Just like, yeah, that's. And then when he gets got to that part when they asked, "Oh, well, what kind of woman would you like? Would you marry?" It ain't that. <laughs> Notice that he said to complete out a woman with confidence. Because he ain't no one with confidence selling it for no bull. She ain't no high-value woman that loves herself going to tolerate no goddamn bullshit like that. We have seen many stories of women that went through some toxic-ass, abusive relationships. On the surface, it looked all peaches and cream and silver and gold. Look at the Latrus, for example. And the pain that people, that women suffer. And that, the thing about trauma, yo, trauma is life altering. Your life will never be the same. And on the surface, it appeared that the guy she with, me and her some good, the guy from, from New York, me and her some good. And, you know, she was able to kind of bounce back to recuperate, right? But that trauma that she went through in that marriage that looked good on the surface still is always going to impact her. Right? We may never see how it, how it comes out in their relationship because people show what they want to show on social media, but time will tell. Time will motherfucking tell. And women are women. Black women go through a lot. I just don't see how. How? Uh, it's not in me. I was just having this reflection today because I took off work from the hospital where I work. I was self-reflecting. And, and when I say like who I am and how I present when it comes to my 
attitudes on relationships. It's the same when it comes to professional and business. I don't deal with that shit. I don't see how people tolerate in personal relationships, people mistreating them. I mean, I know how. I get it because I understand the mind. But it's just like, <laughs> you got to wake up at some point and say, hell no, I deserve better. Like, know who you are. Tap back into source and who you are and say, no, I deserve better. Same thing working on a job, nine to five. The shit that people put up with on, I, I don't see how people get up every day and do it, but complain. That's not it. Just to say, okay, I got a job because it pays the bills. Just to say, okay, I got a man. And one may be watching this and may take it as though I'm putting down black love or I'm saying, okay, you shouldn't get a man or you shouldn't be with no. If you take that away from this message, you missed a whole motherfucking point. Because there are black men that truly do value the black woman. But I'm saying, just be careful out there. And love yourself, man. No truth for what it is. Even if it means walking alone, you don't have to sit up here and settle. You don't have to lower your standards. I will never. Because what's for me is for me. Whatever that is, even if it's nothing, <laughs> it's for me. And I will be happy and content with whatever that is. But I'm not lowering my standards. I'm not selling for an abusive man because there's different types of abuse. He may not be beating your ass inside the head, but if you go out there betraying your vows, the commitment and betraying trust, and you say, okay, you should accept that, ain't no man that love the black woman going to say no bullshit like that. Ain't no man that hold himself accountable and is self-respecting going to say no bullshit like that. That's not love. Whoever is perpetuating that and y'all think this shit is funny because it's pop culture and it, it looks good, yeah. In mainstream culture, it looks good on these little uh, podcast shows because they get 100,000 views, what's popular. Okay, that is good, but nah, sweetie. Mm -mm. And it's good that his baby mom's protected. It's a reason why. It's good that they, he, they protected the daughters from that toxic shit. Hmm. That's all I'm gonna say. Listen, you can come for me if you want to, baby. <laughs> you ain't coming for me. You coming for the spirits that govern me, baby, because everything, every word I said, I was used here in this video. So I'll catch y'all later.